Hi, I'm Chuck with IWS Motor Coaches. Today's kind of an exciting day for me. You know, over the years, I've always wanted to make a video uh, as we're driving one of these so I could try to share that experience with you. And today's the day. We're gonna really do a quick overview of this motorhome. Most of you out there watching our YouTube, they're following us, that kind of know the ins and outs of these. So we're gonna go pretty quick through the outside. But today's focus is gonna be on what the inside's like with the slides in. I'm gonna go pull some hills and do some turns so you can really try to see what driving one of these is really like. This is our Renegade Classic. It's 37 foot overall, and this is really um, a performance-minded motorhome. We, at 37 foot overall length, that turns exceptionally well. 505 horsepower, there's incredible amounts of power in this coach, it's just, it's just exceptional. So with all of that, let's go ahead and uh, start the tour. Okay, we're gonna start up at the front of the coach and we're gonna talk a little bit about the chassis. This is a Freightliner Cascadia 113. And that means it's 113 inches from the back of the cab to the front bumper. A normal Freightliner Cascadia is a 125, so it's 125 inches. And that means the hood is 12 inches longer. You're gonna see the benefits of running this shorter hood on this particular coach because it really increases visibility, drivability, and turning radius by shortening all of this up. We're only able to do that because we switched to the Detroit 13 liter, the DD13. It's still 505 horsepower. It's an incredible power plant, but it's in a much shorter package. As we move back, You'll see we've got the side mounted turd signals and I'm pointing these out because when we get inside the coach and we drive and I turn the turn signals on, you'll be able to see it on the screen as it's showing this side of the coach. It also has the Bendix collision mitigation system and this is just a sensor, a sonar if you will, that's kind of looking out this side of the coach. And as we're driving today, when somebody comes up beside us, you're going to see the lights illuminate up on the A-pillar of the coach, and this is the sensor that's, that's uh, sensing them. If you look up here in the hood, or it's probably hard in the sun to see it, but there's a sensor up here in the top of the windshield, and that sensor's looking forward, and it's looking at the lanes to let you know if you're in or outside of the lanes. You'll hear the audible warning as we're driving, it also has a sensor right here that senses how close you are to another vehicle. And with this collision mitigation system, if you're coming up onto somebody too quick, it'll actually start applying the brakes. So it has a lot of uh, driver safety features built into it. And we'll talk more as we get inside. Now, as I make my way back to the coach, I wanna point out the real nice big mirrors they're powered and heated. It's got real nice, easy to grab door handles. It's easy to climb in and out of this motorhome if you're a passenger. You can see nice, easy steps and a grab handle, so it's very easy to climb in and you're inside the coach. Exiting's just as easy. You can exit forward or backwards, but you can grab the grab handles and down you go. We've talked a lot about the doors. I'm gonna quickly go through the cabinets. As you can see, here's your first large storage cabinet. It has an inverter inside of it. All of these um, lock and unlock with a remote control. They're also lighted. This compartment we've set up with a 110 outlet and a 12 volt outlet inside so we can add a, a slide out fridge freezer if you want one. Here's a 110 outlet here on the side, so if you want to plug in an outside TV or an electric barbecue grill, you can do that there. I'm going pretty quick today because I want to save time for the drive. Here's another open storage compartment. These lights right here are real nice when you're backing up. You can uh, turn these alley lights on or um, backup lights right here with the switch and it just kind of illuminates this area which really helps when you're uh, driving. Here's the Aqua Hot diesel fired heater. 
Um, I've talked a lot in a lot of videos about this. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. If you wanna know more about this, give us a call. Just a great option. And then this last one is also a storage compartment. I also wanna point out when it comes to lights, you can see we've done our IWS um, outside scene lights. This is a vent for the dryer, and this is a vent for the microwave. And it's very important when you're looking at buying a motorhome to understand that most motorhome manufacturers do not vent the microwave outside. You can turn the fan on, but all it's doing is recirculating the air. And Renegade actually uh, vents the microwave to the outside, which is really nice when you're cooking. As we move around to the back of this coach, you'll see two exhaust pipes. This exhaust pipe's for the aqua hot heater, and this one's for the generator. It also has a 20,000 pound hitch. It's actually a 40,000 pound hitch, but it's derated to 20,000 because of the single rear axle. It has air glad hookup, so if you want to pull a trailer with air brakes, you've got that connection point there. Seven-way trailer connector, as well as your Voyager camera connection. We do have a backup camera already on the coach, but if you want to run a backup camera on your trailer, we can plug that in right here. You can also see we've done a rear window on this coach. That's something that I'm a big fan of. Um, we have it on, all, on my personal coach and we, we put it on all of these. Now we're gonna go ahead and pause for a minute, turn the motorhome around so we can get the sun on this side and do a quick walkthrough down this side. Okay, we're gonna start at the back of the coach. This compartment has the power cord, the power wind cord reel. You can just pull your 220 or your um, shore cord out. And then when you want to wind it up, you just touch the power wind and then you can wind the cord up. And then put the cover on. The other thing we've been doing, it's kind of been a signature series of us, is we're installing a 110 outlet as well as a 30 amp connection. So if you want to pull a big trailer and you want to run power, you can have a place to plug in back here. Here's the 8KW generator. And the reason we put an 8K in this one is when we go to an 8K, we're able to raise it up inside to give you a little bit more rear uh, clearance as you're going through dips. But we also think 8KW is perfect power for this coach. With two air conditioners, you still got ample electricity in it. I guess the thing I want you to know is a lot of thought went behind all of this. You know, and when we're choosing what goes into a coach. <clears throat> As we're looking at the rear axle on this coach, note that this, this particular chassis, we've specified to have air disc brakes it just really greatly improves the driving experience and the stopping power by going to air disc. I've talked through this a lot. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here, but this is your water management compartment right here. Everything's easy to use. This is where your sewage compartment is and your macerator pump. We've done the ceramic temp coat insulation and also installed an aqua hot heat exchanger in here. So not only is this compartment extra insulated, there's uh, heat going through the aqua hot heat register so it keeps this compartment nice and warm so you can use this coach in the dead of winter. We've got a lot of Facebook photos of our customers using their motorhomes at ski resorts in the winter. Um, they're just a truly four season coach. Here's the batteries. We've got three of these 8D batteries in them. You know, a lot of people wonder where the cost of these coaches come from. Each one of these batteries are right at $1,000 a piece. But what it's gonna do is allow you to run this coach uh, all night long and watch TV and um, run different features in it without having to start the generator. So it's really, truly off-grid camping. The other neat thing about it is as you're driving down the road, the truck is charging the batteries as well. So you don't have to run the, continue to run the generator. 
Well, that about concludes the outside portions. Let's go ahead and go on inside this coach. All right, here we are on the inside of this coach. And as I mentioned before, we're gonna go pretty quick on the inside because today is all about driving one of these. We've got the hardwood cabinet, dovetail wood construction, solid uh, hardwood maple, uh, residential style sink, flush mounted true induction cooktop, residential refrigerator. We've got the dinette with the slide out drawers underneath of it, uh, and the dinette does fold down into the bed. I'm gonna go ahead and slide one drawer open just so you can see. There's extra storage under both of these. This does go down and make into a bed. New for 2019, there's seat belts in the forward facing dinette. There's two sets, so if you have kids with your guests, they can be buckled in and sitting here at the table. Lots of overhead compartments. I'm a huge fan of this leather. This is uh, ultra leather. It's just super soft, um, very stain resistant. All flex steel furniture, flex steel air mattress, um, hide a bed that folds out and makes into an air mattress. Ceramic tile flooring. Um, I just really love the look of this coach. It's probably, it's, it's one of my favorites. Here's the slide out pantry. Again, you can see the dovetail construction, how thick the wood is. This is, this is the real deal here. Soft closed, uh, full length drawer slides on it. Here's where all the fuses are located so they're easy and accessible. As we move in here, you'll see that we've done in the bathroom we have a huge linen closet, lots of room in here. And then for space savings, we've done the all-in-one washer. Full stand-up shower. I'm gonna go ahead and step in here. You know, as I pointed out before, I'm six foot tall. There's tons of room in here. Um, lots of room to take a really nice shower. Got a shower lock right here to keep the doors from opening. Also take a quick peek in the private toilet. Has a macerator, ceramic or porcelain toilet. As I mentioned in every video, we love the macerator because it grinds up and emulsifies all of, the, all of the byproduct. Now we've moved in here into the bedroom. As you can see, it's just very well appointed. This is our IWS um, exclusive design wardrobe. So this is his and hers wardrobe closets. And then you have a spot right here to set your cell phone, um, jewelry, wallets, whatever. You've got your USB outlets, your 110 outlets. I'm a guy that likes to travel um, with my pistol. So I have a nice spot here to keep it. My wife can keep hers over there. Uh, we have a spot here for water bottles, remote controls. There's um, overhead lighting and switches here to turn on the reading lights at night. So you have his and hers reading lights as well as wall sconces. <clears throat> really a big fan of this back window. Um, I'll pull the daylight shade down and then this is the, oh, sorry, the night shades on this one are all powered. So you can electrically control that. I forgot to talk about the power shades when I was in front, but they're all, uh, remote control powered. All right, I hope I didn't go too fast for everybody. I also do wanna point out that there's 150 gallons of water here underneath the bed. I'll go ahead and lift this up and let you have a quick peek. Here's your water storage and your water pump so that if you ever have a water pump go out, it's easy to change. It's also very easy to winterize these coaches. I like the fact that the water is stored inside the coach so I can use mine in the middle of winter. You know, we'll be headed to Barrett Jackson in January down in Arizona. And granted it's warm there, but it's very cold till we get there. I also wanna point out what a textured wall looks like. And what they do is this is a real textured fabric, but there's a thin layer of foam behind it. So you get a real nice soft padded, but what it also does is it changes the noise in here. It really does a great job of absorbing sound. So when you get in these renegades, it's almost like just a soothing sensation because everything gets real quiet. You put that with the extra insulation that we put in the walls and 
this thing's just, it's like a sound locker. Well, enough with that. Let's go up and uh, let's run the slides in. And then I'm going to walk through so you can see what it looks like with the slides in. Okay, we've slid the rear slides in as well as the front slides so I can give you an idea of what it's like to walk through here. As you can see, there's plenty of room. And the other nice thing about it is that, you know, when we're traveling in our Renegade, we'll stop and make a sandwich. We get to use the dinette with the slide in. We can still open and close the fridge with the slides in. We have access to the pantry with the slide outs in as well as access to the microwave, the stove, the sink. So we can use everything we want with the slides in. Another neat thing that I really like is by having the dual slides in the bedroom. If I pull into a truck stop or a, or a um, what am I trying to say, a rest area, and maybe this side of the coach, there's a truck or an obstruction, and on this side of the coach, there's grass, I'll push this rear slide out in the bedroom and then I can stretch out and sleep. So I can choose which side to slide out to gain some room in the back. Well, hopefully that answers your questions here about um, accessibility with the slides in. Now we're gonna move up and start driving. All right, here we go. We're gonna start our, our epic voyage here. So the first thing I like to do when I get in my seat is get my seat height set. These seats have air adjustment, so this is all the way down. This is all the way up, and uh, so I'm going to lower it just a little bit. I'm also going to go ahead and step the steering wheel, so as you can see, it telescopes, and it also tilts, so I'm going to get it in the position that I like. You have two armrests on this coach, or driver and passenger both have two armrests. You can push this little lever, and they're fully adjustable. You can set them anywhere you want them. I like mine just up just a little bit. So now as you can see, I've got a real nice seating position. I've got my mirror adjustment here. I'm gonna get my mirror set. And then we're gonna go ahead and start it up. It's, when I turn the key on, you're gonna hear the audible alarms and it's nothing to worry about. There's a speaker in this side that the collision mitigation as you, if you drift over this line, this alarm's gonna sound. If you go over the other side, that alarm's gonna sound. Some, I normally will let the gauges go through their cycle. And we're gonna go ahead and start the coach up. I'm also gonna turn on the AC, it's a little bit warm out here, so you'll hear a little bit of that in the background. But here we are in the coach. I'm gonna be quiet just for a second. You can hear the engine running and the air conditioning running. So as you can see, it's relatively quiet. It's interesting to me when people drive these or talk about them, they seem a little intimidated by everything that's going on. But yet if you go through, you know, everything I'm going through, this is just like driving my pickup. You know, you, you, everything's pretty much situated the same, or at least to me, it feels very natural, just like I'm in my pickup. Talk a little bit about some of the controls here. So this is cruise control on and off. And you'll see when I turn it on and off, there's an icon up here, so it's off, it's on, that tells you the cruise control's on and off. You have your, your accelerate, cancel here. You also have your uh, marker interrupter switch here, and what that does is every time I push that, my marker lights flash. So if I'm driving down the road like we will be today and a semi flashes its lights and says it's okay to move over, after I moved over, I'm going to hit this two or three times as a way of saying thank you. It's kind of a trucking thing. I'll tilt this up a little more. This is your engine brake, and we're going to talk about that a little more. But what I do want to point out is there's an icon right here that comes on that tells you my engine brake is on and off. And then this lane searching light, earlier in the video when I was outside, I pointed out there's a sensor in the windshield that's always looking down at the lanes. So you've got you know, your fog line or your white line on this side and then a white or yellow line over here and it's constantly looking to identify them. And right now it's telling you, hey, I'm not recognizing any lanes. We're here in our gravel parking lot of our new facility. Um, so there's no lanes. You can also um, 
turn that lane alert on and off. So let's say you're in a really mountainous area and there's a lot of curves and switchbacks and this alarm's continually buzzing. You'll hear it buzzing back and forth when you're drifting out of your lane. You can turn that off for, I believe it's about three minutes at a time. Um, so that's kind of a neat feature. We've got our regular complements of gauges, but a lot of people want to know what the plus and minus is. And I'm going to go ahead and walk you through that. So as you can see up here, right now we've got a trip miles per gallon to 7.9 miles per gallon in 2,000 miles. It's 80 degrees outside, 1.10 p.m. Don't be alarmed by this mileage. That's the first 2,000 miles that includes idle time. I fully expect that to get closer to 10 as you own the motorhome. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my up and down arrow button on the steering wheel. So it tells you in 1,800 miles, I've used 229 gallons of fuel. Oops. Uh, engine's at 155 degrees, 13.6 volts in the battery. Now when we get into the parked menu, there's a toggle switch down here on the dash that's gonna tell me trip info, trip leg, uh, average miles per gallon, gallons used, and I can keep cycling through these. And then you have to use your arrow button. So the engine's idled 38, or it's, the engine's been on 38 hours, it's idled for eight hours. Average mile per hour is 47. Um, you can also go through and hold and, and reset any of these. So really there's just a lot of functions that you can scroll through um, to gain more information about these. You gotta remember this chassis came from the trucking industry and what a lot of people are very interested in is, so you can have two units, two trucks with the exact same amount of miles, but one truck's had more fuel ran through it and that's telling you that the driver's been harder on that one. So there's a lot of data that you can go through on there. Next thing I wanna talk about is, when we get over here is the air, the, the two parking brakes. So when I come in and park, or when I go to take off, I'll depress the parking brake. We actually started to roll there. When I'm done and I'm ready to park, I pull that and that supplied the full parking brake on the rear axle. This trailer brake, this is air supply for your trailer. So you would never use this unless you were pulling a trailer with air brakes. Okay, now we're gonna talk a little bit about the Garmin Fusion. Uh, GPS and stereo as well as the camera. Normally people upgrade to our big nine inch Halo 9, but this is what comes standard. So you got your standard music. Um, I'll go ahead and highlight that a little bit. So you got your radio stations, AM, FM, Cirrus. Uh, you got your auxiliary and your Bluetooth so you can sync your phone to it. Um, you've also got a destination. You've got your map view on here. There's a picture of the motorhome. Um, and then it has all the other standard features, trip data. I'm not going to go too far into that. Also has a backup camera. I'm going to go ahead and release the parking brake and put it in reverse. Now you can see the backup camera and these bars on it. We're going to go a little bit more into that here a little bit later. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the turn signal. So this is looking out the driver's side down the side of the motorhome. You can actually see my pickup sitting back there, right there. And now we're gonna go ahead and move over to the other side. You can see these other motorhomes. Here's the mirror, the fender, the fuel tank looking out the right-hand side. All right, now we're gonna move over here and talk a little bit about the collision mitigation system. And I'm gonna run it through its demo mode so you can see it. But note at the end of this video, we're gonna put a link to their um, that we're gonna put a link to their video so you can actually watch it uh, real time how this thing will can stop you in the middle of a fog storm um, or a foggy night or in the middle of a storm. It's quite amazing. Right now it's just gonna run you through some of the screens that you're going to see during the normal course of driving. This is normally the screen you're going to see.
So this is saying there's a vehicle 33 feet in front of you. Now it's really getting your attention saying it's time to start applying some brake here because we're closing in on an object. And now at this point, the system's taken over and applied full brakes. Okay. And then that's gone through the demo mode and now this is a normal screen you're gonna be looking at. And again, I'd encourage you to watch the video. This thing's quite impressive. Here's your temperature control fan switch, hot and cold. You've got your uh, vent settings. This is the, this will lower the air suspension. This here will lock the differentials. This is where there's a plug-in in the back of here for your USB outlet. This is your tire pressure monitor system. This is where you shift it from neutral to drive to reverse. Um, this is just a, a, a radar sensor or a remote control sensor, if you will. Here's your backup camera for the truck and the trailer. You can switch between the two. Here's your trailer brakes. All right, now if I can get Zach to hone in over there to the A pillar, you'll see that Bendix, the red and yellow lights up there on the side. And as we travel uh, down the freeway today, you'll see that and that's gonna be alerting us if there's somebody along the passenger side. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to do as tight a circle as we can and we're going to uh, drive around here so that you can see how tight these things really turn. So I'm going to go all the way hard left. And as I begin driving, what we're going to do after we make this circle is we're going to go ahead and jump in my F-250 that you can see parked over here. And we're going to do the same circle. And my hopes are that you can see how this coach turns compared to a full-size four-door pickup. Um, I know there's going to be comments about Fish Fighter on my pickup, and I just want to explain right now that I own a company called Fish Fighter Products, so I'm, I'm able to combine both of my loves, uh, my passion, which is RVing the outdoors and fishing together. So, so I'm going to go ahead and set the parking brake, and then I'm going to go get in my F-250, and we're going to do the same turn. And hopefully with the drone footage and everything layered on it, you'll be able to see how they turn compared to each other. Okay, well we've just finished doing the circles. I hope you see some value in how tight these things will really turn. It's, uh, it's just something you really need to experience. So we're gonna go ahead and head out onto the highway. So I'm gonna ask Zach to bring the camera and get pretty much over my shoulder here for just a second. So that should be giving you a little bit of a view of what I'm seeing. So we're gonna go ahead and go into drive and uh, Going to go ahead and head out of the parking lot here. And this is just pulling out onto a two lane road. You heard the quick little alarm there. So we're going to go ahead and pull out onto this road. And I'm going to just go ahead and keep it in one lane so you can see how easy it is to turn. Uh, this here, by the way, is our GoPro, so just disregard that. We're trying to give you another shot. So now we're going to go ahead and pull into the IWS parking lot here, and I'm going to back up, show you kind of how maneuverable these are. 
it's kind of hard to really show you distance. Um, but I'm guessing from the back of this Verona to our motorhome or to our shop is probably around 120 feet. So I'm just going to come in here, hug kind of tight. And then I'm just going to go ahead and wheel this bad boy around pretty tight. There's a, and then we've been able to, we can make this turn right inside the parking lot. I'm going to go ahead and back it in here so you can kind of get an understanding of how the backup camera works and just how easy it is to back these units up. So I'm going to go into reverse, get us lined up here with the parking spot. And now we're in straight. And then I'm going to try to stop with the trailer hitch right at the edge of the concrete, about as close as right there. Set my parking brake. And then we're gonna go ahead and walk out and see how good a job I did at the back. Well, how'd we do? So it looks pretty good. You can see right here, we got the back of the hitch lined up with the concrete, just like it showed in the uh, backup camera. So hopefully that illustrates just how easy these things are to drive and back up. So let's go ahead and keep on with our journey. We're gonna drive around the parking lot a little. I'm gonna do some tight turns and then we're gonna head out on the freeway. Continue driving around the parking lot here. So as you can see, it's real easy to move out. It's nice and quiet, it's easy to steer. And uh, we have a pretty tight turn coming up over here at the end of all of our trailers. So I'm just kind of drive along again hopefully you can see perspective here but this is about oh i think we're about 50 feet wide here uh, maybe 60 feet so we're just going to come in make a turn i'll also point out as we come around the corner um, we have rv hookups here for our customers only we can see we've got somebody who dropped in last night so if you're an iws customer you can feel free to come in and use our RV sites and our sewer hookups uh, at no charge. We also have a real nice kennel here for you to keep your dogs in. So as we come around here, it looks like it's pretty tight, but it's absolutely no issue at all. Just drive right on through here. And then we're gonna head right on out here onto the street. So when I'm driving these things, just like you know any big truck, I try to make kind of almost over-exaggerated wide turns. Um, probably the best advice I was ever given, um, you know, I grew up on a cattle ranch and when I was taught to drive our big semis, uh, Terry Black taught me, look way down the road. Um, and always be anticipating, like when you pull into a parking lot, always figure out how you want to get out. So we're going to go ahead and stop. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this turn and I'm going to make sure I stay right here in one lane. I'm not going to go out into the other lane so you can see it really turns about like my full size pickup. Um, obviously it's a little bit longer. So one thing we're going to talk about a little bit is the engine brake as we kind of idle on down through here to get onto the freeway. So the engine brake, so there's three settings down here. There's high, medium, and low. I'm going to go ahead and set it on the high. And you can run with the engine brake on. It's not going to activate until I completely come off the throttle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. You can kind of hear the engine brake uh, engaging. And while I don't have the exact data in front of me, so please don't hold me uh, to the exact number, but this engine's 505 horsepower. I believe, if memory serves me, on the high setting, you get 400 brake horsepower. On the number two setting, you, let's say you get 200 brake horsepower, and on the low setting, you get 100 brake horsepower. So if it took you 500 or 
400 horsepower to go up a hill or 380 horsepower on the high setting, you have 400 brake horsepower to slow you down. So obviously on the high setting, you're gonna slow down too fast. Um, on the medium setting, you'll slow down slower and on the low, I guess what I'm trying to say is ideally with an engine brake, you would wanna set it on the proper setting that holds you back at the speed limit all the way to the bottom of the hill. So that's where it's nice having three different settings. I almost always operate my motorhome with the engine brake on. The only time I take it off is if I'm downtown or something and I don't want that additional engine braking horsepower to slow me down. So, here we are. This is a pretty good hill out of our uh, company and we're already at 60 miles an hour in just a few seconds. The speed limit out here is 80. Um, and it's kind of hard to describe just how steep this hill is, but I want to show you kind of how well this thing accelerates. You know, we're at 70. You're also going to notice I'll have Zach kind of pan over here to the Bendix in the A. You're gonna see that light change, because see it just went to red because we have this fifth wheel and pickup beside us. And if he'll stay on that with the camera, as soon as we get clear, and now it's switched to yellow, so we're okay to get over in the other lane. Now as I get over, my uh, right-hand turn signal camera came on. And now through all of this, we're running 75 miles an hour. Um, and hopefully you can kind of get a sense of what the, you know, what the noise is like in here. One thing that I've always liked about these motorhomes is that my wife is right here within an arm's reach, so it works out really nice. We can have a good conversation. Uh, you know, when we were in class A's, we sat a lot further apart and we found we had to yell at each other a lot. But here we are tooling along. I'll go ahead and get us up to, uh, here's 75 miles an hour, and as you can see, we're just tooling along nice and smooth. Um, I'll go ahead and get us up to 80 real quick. Okay, so here we are running 80. Now I'm gonna go ahead and activate the alarm. I'm gonna come in on this pickup and you're gonna see right now that pickup's 210 seven feet away. We're closing 190, 180. And there it's warning me, hey, you're getting too close. 148, 131. So I'm gonna start backing off. And as I decelerate away from the vehicle, you can see that the gap has increased. Now we're green. That's telling me we're at a proper distance uh, apart from one another. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get off the off ramp up here and then we're gonna go ahead and drive back to town. But I'm gonna kinda show you the engine brake. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and we're gonna come into this off ramp a little hot. I'm gonna, just to kinda illustrate it so we're on the high setting with the engine brake, so I'm gonna go ahead and decelerate. And you can hear the engine brake coming on. The transmission's downshifted already to fifth. And here it's starting to really apply that 400 plus brake horsepower to it. Now we've gone down the fourth gear. And now I'm just gonna apply some very light brake pressure. I would anticipate the air brakes on this could possibly go 200, maybe even 300,000 miles. Um, so now I've left the engine brake still on. It's deactivated because we're at an idle. I'm gonna turn left. As you can see, I've got a left screenshot. I've also got good clearance in my mirror. Got a car coming. So I'm just gonna pull over right here, stop. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my stopwatch because I kind of want to give you as best illustration as I can. Now this is a downhill um, off ramp, 
but I kind of want to show you how quick you can merge on the traffic. So I'm going to go ahead and start the timer right now. So we're accelerating. So we're 10 seconds in and we're running 45 at 14 seconds. 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, and a little bit slower. We got a bit of an uphill. Now we're running 80 miles an hour. So we did that in around 45 seconds. So now we're back up to full 80 mile an hour speed. We're just kind of scooting along the freeway here. I'm also gonna show you, I'll set the cruise control on. I'm gonna turn it on and set it. So we're at, uh, actually at 79 miles an hour. So we've got a pretty good hill here. I'm gonna go ahead and have you keep an eye on the speed as we're all call out the speed if we drop at all but currently we're still holding at 79 exactly. I'm also going to do a little bit of a lane move. I'm going to move over the line just a little bit and you'll hear the alarm sounding. Hear it? I don't know if you can hear it, but as I get over the white line, and there you heard the alarm, the audible, maybe you heard it better there. I'll do one more over this way there you can hear it alerting me to get back into my lane you can also see right here I'm 322 feet away from the vehicle in front the green says we're at the proper distance in the event that we have to do a panic stop we'll have enough time to stop um, I'm gonna speed up on him again real quick and so you can see we're getting into the yellow zone and they look at the distance versus the speed it's gonna turn yellow here pretty quick There it is, so it's saying, hey, it's time to back off. I got the engine brake on. We're coming downhill. The truck's slowing down on its own. I have zero brake pressure applied. And now we're gonna head on down the off-ramp. And again, I have no brakes at all on. We're just uh, using entirely using the engine brake. You can see it's has six gears, we're in fourth of six. I still haven't touched the brake pedal at all. And I came in awful fast into this off-ramp. Or not awful fast, but um, fairly fast. So now I'm gonna just give it a little bit of brake pressure. These air disc brakes, they, they really, the older air brakes used to be very sensitive. So you'd touch them and you'd lurch forward. And these are very much like driving regular brakes on your pickup. Okay, well, we made it back safe and sound. I hope you guys enjoyed this drive. You know, it's very important to me that here at IWS that we're doing our part and doing our job in being a sales organization. And that's not just to sell you the motorhome, but to make sure you're very well informed and you understand what you're getting into. You know, it's, it's quite re rewarding to me and my son and our staff that People put enough faith in us that they're willing to spend two, three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars on a motorhome, and we we take that responsibility very seriously. And I think the more we inform the public, um, our customers, it just kind of makes everybody better. My mentor Donnie always said, you know, when the water in the harbor goes up, all the ships goes up. So we're just trying to elevate um, the standards for the RV industry. I also want to thank Zach for sticking with me on this video. It's a lot of work um, and uh, you know, he risked life and limb standing up here behind me trying to get this shot for you. So if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe. This is something that really fuels us and keeps us going is as we see we get more and more subscribers. And for those of you leaving good comments, I really appreciate it. And uh, 
So just make sure if you like us, subscribe us, follow us on our Facebook, all that stuff adds up and it really means a lot to us. And uh, with all that being said, I hope to see you out on the road.